Good morning. First, I want to thank my family and friends and everyone here at St. Joseph's for all of your prayers and support during my Jesuit formation. When I entered the Jesuits 10 years ago, in 2006, some people joke that our formation is so long because we're slow learners. <laughs> Ordination seemed like a lifetime away. But as of yesterday, I'm a deacon, and in June, I'll be ordained a priest in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So, thank you. <laughs> As the saying goes, it takes a village. Uh, in the case of a priest, it takes a church. I really can't believe how blessed I am. I look out in this crowd and I see a lot of familiar faces, a lot of children that I taught, a lot of people that I've encountered, family and friends. And I just want to thank God for each and every one of you and everything you've done, every prayer, uh, every kindness, every gift, every dinner out, uh, it's a good thing I have a big cincture. <laughs> every treat, every greeting, and everything else you've done for me, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Second, I want to give you my first homily. The weak, the oppressed, the orphan, the widow, the lowly. Our first reading tells us God has no favorites, but he hears the prayers of these people in particular. People that our own world today reject as losers, as bums, as trash to be thrown out. Our culture tells us we have to be strong. We have to be free to do what we want. We have to be our own person, self-sufficient. We have to look out for number one, me, myself. Yet if the prayer of these poor people pierces the clouds, then they must have something to teach us about our relationship with God. What might that be? I would say the importance of humility, of emptiness, of having room in our lives for God. The one thing all these poor people have in common is that life, in ways beyond their own power, has taken something away from them. Power and strength, freedom, family, spouse, status, livelihood. A great emptiness has been forced into their life. And where life has a void, we have a need. And God wants to fill that. How many of us are guilty of treating God like Superman? Calling on him and praying only when we need him. He's the repairman of our lives, something, someone we really only go to or think about or pray to when there's a noticeable problem in our life. God wants badly to fulfill all of those needs, every desire, whether it is a catastrophic disaster or just a small one. However, he wants a much deeper relationship than just being our Mr. Fix-It. He wants to be our everything. If we only turn to God in our serious need, what is our relationship with him when things are going really well or when everything's just kind of okay? Do we forget about him and kind of pat ourselves on the back at how good we're doing and all of our success and our own strength? The weak. We are all weak. We did not create ourselves. We didn't give ourselves breath. The oppressed. We are all oppressed by sin. The orphan. We're not orphans only because Jesus gave us his father and his mother to be ours. The widow. Because of Jesus, we are never without the love and support of God. We've all had our share of struggle and misfortune and tragedy in this life, but we must remember that in good times and bad, everything we have, everything we are, is a gift from God. We need room in our hearts for him to dwell and have a place in our life. And not just when life's troubles tear something out and leave a gaping hole, 
So how do we keep room in our hearts that's open to God constantly and not just when we need him? St. Paul talks about being poured out like a libation, about competing well in the race. What he's saying is that when we live our faith, it empties us as much as it fills us. Just like the winner of a race is exhausted from competing, but is fulfilled in being victorious. Being a Christian means living like Jesus, loving and serving, and pouring himself out as an offering. This is what we see on the cross when his heart was pierced by the spear and poured out for us. And it's more than just doing good deeds and being a nice person. There are a lot of people in the world that get burnt out after months or years of doing good things for other people. But when we Christians pour ourselves out for God and for others, we rely on that same God to refill us. We don't just give the homeless food or eat food to eat or clothes to wear, but we give them God's love as well. And we cannot give what we don't have. Living our faith fills us with God's love and makes it possible to pour out what we have been given. Love one another as I have loved you. When we live contrary to our faith, when our heart is full of pride, selfishness, grudges, unforgiveness, Greed, envy, hatred, lust, indifference, apathy, self-reliance. Then we have very little to give, and we find ourselves always running on empty. When our wealth or success is the most important thing in our lives, we can be the poorest person in the world, because there's no room in our heart for God, nothing to receive, Nothing to give. The key then to living the Christian life, to having room in our heart for God, is recognizing our constant need for Him. If we're going to be loving people, we need love, and love requires humility. We've all heard love is patient, love is kind, it is not jealous, it is not pompous. It is not inflated. It does not seek its own interests. To become like Paul, to be able to give ourselves generously in love as Christians, we need to look at one final example, the tax collector. Jesus tells us in today's gospel that it was the tax collector who went home justified before God, not the Pharisee. Notice the Pharisee is not really a bad person, He's not greedy, dishonest, or adulterous, and he's generous with his money. He's very religious as well. He does all the right things. Tax collectors, on the other hand, were seen as traitors to their own people, overcharging and enforcing the policies of foreign oppressors. But notice the difference in his prayer compared to the Pharisee. Does the Pharisee admit of his need for God? No. Rather, he's basically telling God that he doesn't need him for anything. His prayer is, Hey God, I'm doing great. Look at me. The tax collector identifies himself as a sinner, as a person who desperately needs God. The tax collector wasn't poor. Life hadn't taken anything away. And he certainly wasn't pouring himself out to others. He realized he was a sinner, and thus in need of God. Without God, he is nothing, and he knows that. In other words, the Pharisee was too full of himself and had no room for God. The tax collector, because of his humility, was empty of himself and receptive to God. Humility is the key to a strong relationship with God who desire so much to fill us, to dwell in our hearts. But there's only room enough for one in there, and too often there's too much of us and not enough of him. Our faith, especially the Mass, helps us to make room in our hearts for him. We begin Mass by praying the prayer of the tax collector. 
I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. And we beat our breasts, just like the tax collector did. Before we receive Jesus into our bodies so that he can enter into our hearts, what do we say? Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter in, under my roof. We humbly empty ourselves in preparation for love, for receiving someone into our hearts, especially God. The tax collector, Paul, the lowly, they all teach us that God is not an intruder. He's not going to kick open the door of our hearts and make himself at home. He's a guest. And so he needs to be invited and he needs to have a place to stay. We might ask ourselves every so often, what in my life is in God's way? How can I make more room in my heart, in my life, for him? The world tells us that we can have anything we want. We can have it all. But we know that's not true. Our God says, especially in the Eucharist we celebrate today, I am everything you need.